many, maybe most, KPI performance dashboards fail to inform because people jump the gun and focus too much on the app and not nearly enough on the KPIs. To get the dashboard you really need, five simple steps will get you there. If a dashboard isn't answering the right performance questions, people stop using it, or they let it distract them away from the right performance questions. The app should not be the start nor the focus of a performance dashboard build. You will get the dashboard you truly need a lot sooner by taking the quick and easy route to set up a simple, bare bones dashboard that can do the job. If you invest heavily in expensive applications too soon, you'll end up locked into popular dashboard designs, not functional ones. Instead, build your dashboard prototype using something easily available, even if it's just Microsoft Excel. That's all we use to set up our first performance dashboards with Pump. Think of it as the first iteration. It will help you see with more certainty what it should ultimately become. Now to get your first performance dashboard iteration set up, five simple steps are all you need, so let's explore them. Step one is to focus only on your top two or three priority performance results or goals. Stop trying to do it all at once perfectly. It's expensive, it's time consuming, and it's momentum sapping. Build the first iteration with a focus on two or three carefully selected performance results or goals. To make sure that you build momentum that you can maintain, select goals that are clearly and specifically worded and not vague or ambiguous, so the team has a shared understanding of exactly what they mean. Goals that are important or urgent enough to motivate the team to follow through with the dashboard and use it to help achieve those goals. And goals that are likely to have a range of available data relating to them. So when the team chooses the measures, they won't spend too much time sourcing the data. Now a great tool to help any team map out the goals or results that matter is Pump's results map. The results map captures all the performance results that matter to the team. It aligns them to the corporate strategy as well. It'll help the team select the goals to choose for the fast performance dashboard project and also help them keep track of the next goals that they might want to add to the dashboard in a future iteration. There's a link to the pump results map technique in the video description if you want more info about that tool. Now step two is to choose a few performance measures for those priority results. There is no prize for using all the KPIs you can think of to track a particular performance result. In fact, there's a penalty and it's your attention being spread too thin to make any kind of performance improvement at all. Or your attention being pulled away from uh, your unique priorities. So think narrow and deep, go for truly relevant and insightful performance measures. If you ever get stuck and you can't figure out what the best measures are for a performance result, POMP's measure design technique works a treat. It makes you think about what your result really looks like in tangible terms, and that's the key to finding the right measures. Now there's a link to the POMP measure design technique in the video description for you. Step three, is to define exactly how those priority measures are calculated and from what data. Lame measures won't cut it like customer loyalty. It isn't a performance measure. The percentage of customers who have purchased from us more than three times in the past six months, that is a measure. One of the biggest time wasters in setting up a performance dashboard is trying to figure out exactly how the measures should be measured. Now, that sounds tautological, and it, and it is. If you can't figure out how to measure something with real data, then it isn't a measure yet. Make sure you're choosing real performance measures which follow the recipe for writing a quantitative measure, and I link to that recipe in the video description. So then before you start to build your fast performance dashboard, define each performance measure using pumps measure definition technique 
and keep these in a performance measure dictionary. Again, there is a link in the description to the pump measure definition technique. Step four is to list the data sources for your priority measures and set up links into your dashboard to that data only. A lovely man I once knew named Siva had dozens and, and some say hundreds of special spreadsheets where very key performance measure data was kept for the freight business that he worked for. Only he knew how the spreadsheets worked and where they were saved on the server. Now I know that he's since left that organization. So like, doesn't it make you shudder to think of how long it took for his replacement to try and find and then figure out how those spreadsheets worked? Now my performance dashboard that I use for my business is built in Microsoft Excel, which is perfect for a, a company of one person. It's inexpensive and it's pretty easy, but most importantly for me is that it links to a single core database for all my business data and measure definitions and with queries that I've set up for each KPI um, to update at the click of a button. Now it's still a manual process, but it lays the foundation for fully automating it in the right way if, if I ever decide to go that far. Step five is to systematically create the graphs in the dashboard for each priority measure and arrange them in a single dashboard. Forget about dials and gauges, forget about pie charts and stacked bar charts, forget about trying to use as many different charts as possible. Even though it's near impossible to find an example dashboard without these useless gizmos, the most effective way to monitor your performance measures is with a line chart that tracks changes over time. That's what you're managing when you manage performance, is moving performance closer and closer to a target as time goes by. And if you know what they are, or you're open to what I've found to be the best way to visualize performance measures, use XMR charts instead. There's another link in the description about XMR charts if you're new to them and you want to know a little bit more. Now I arrange my performance measure XMR charts um, onto my dashboard in segments that correspond to my priority performance results. After all, we're using the measures to know if we're achieving those results. My own dashboard follows the pump performance dashboard design principles, which makes it look something like this one. These five steps to a fast performance dashboard bring us quickly to a point where we can actively monitor a few of our most important KPIs. It gives us the chance to fine tune our dashboard and then move on to adding a few more priority performance results or goals and appropriate KPIs for them. A fast performance dashboard therefore is not about rushing, it is about iteration. So do you have any stories or examples to share or want to ask a question about this topic? I would love to hear from you in the comments if you do.